Yes. Are you ready to rock? Hi guys, just Jen here, Cleveland Street Novelties, back with another movie review just for you. And today we're going to be dis... It's it. It's a shirt again, isn't it? I know, they're so eye-catching. Look! Ah! Check it out! Aww. Revenge of the Nerds! You guys love it. You know who it's from, Atomic Cotton. Hope you guys have been checking them out because they have super diggity dope shirts and they're super sweet to be sending them to me to share with you. So back to our movie review. We're actually going to be discussing 2015's Most Likely to Die directed by Anthony de Blasi, and it's a story of these high school buddies who are getting back together for sort of a private pre-reunion before the actual class reunion, which is happening like the next evening. Now, the movie just sings joyfully of the traditional 80s slasher kind of film, and it, it really tries for that. It actually dives in pretty quickly into some action, which I always enjoy. We've got a missing host who is Ray, who's played by uh, Jason Tobias. And then there's an attack on his um, girlfriend, Ashley. And Ashley's played by Skylar Vallow. And then once that whole sequence plays out, it flips immediately over to the arrival of the guests. Um, here we get to see all sort of the traditional high school kind of stereotypes. We've got Jade, who is played by uh, Tess Christensen. She's sort of the lesbian with the heart of gold in the group. We got DJ, who's played by Chad Addison, who's, of course, the class clown. Um, we've got Simone, who is played by Marcy Miller, who's the stone-cold kind of fox, but hell-bent on being number one, you know, valedictorian, made sure she was always super pretty, made sure she was always top of the class. We've got Brad, uh, played by Ryan Campbell, who is our hunky jock, who's actually turned TV star. We've got Lamont, who is played by John Ramey. He's actually um, our one and only African-American here and we have Freddie who's played by Perez Hilton you guys may know recognize that name and Freddie of course is the quirky adorable gay guy in the group and we also have our lead girl Gabby who's played by Heather Morrison who I recognize from Glee um, she is the strong independent sensitive girl she's obviously our final girl from the moment we meet her we just know this is the girl we're going to see at the end. So everybody's kind of sitting around, chit-chatting a little bit. We learn that Gabby and Brad used to date. There's a kind of weird tension going on, especially since Brad's brought this like supermodel hot girlfriend to hang out with everyone. The table talk, though, is just so fakey and so unbelievable. Real friends, honestly, wouldn't talk like this at all. So it gets a little tedious, gets a little overplayed. It just goes on way too long. We do get a fun cameo. Um, the kind of creepy loser, you know, suspected druggie of the group, this guy Tarkin is played by Jake Busey. So we get a Jake Busey, Busey's little scene in there. Um, after just way too much chat and after way too long, everybody starts to ask, hey, hmm? where's our host at? Where's Ray? Where's Ashley at? Really nice friends, huh? They've been at their house partying up, drinking the beer, having a good time, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh wait, I guess there's a few other people that's supposed to be here. Especially since it's kind of strange. When everybody walks in, they notice everyone's high school pictures are up on the wall with like the most likely kind of tags. Most likely to succeed, most likely to get the last laugh, most likely to have their name in lights, things like that. Well, Ashley, who is one of the people missing, uh, most likely to have her name up in lights, has this big red spray painted X through her picture dun 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 kind of makes you wonder immediately like what's going on here clearly none of their friends really seem to care that much until finally they decide to go on a hunt sort of looking for him well they find ashley in this little shed her throat's been slit and she's sort of strung up and her name somebody's taking christmas lights and literally spelt her name out dun 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 just like in the most likely catchphrase it said most likely to have her name in lights spooky well this is when everyone of course gets freaked out all the traditional we should split up no stay together who could it be it's probably you maybe it's Ray blah 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 kind of typical things happen in this movie sadly it starts to just just get all too predictable you know most of the kills before they're going to happen you even know who the killer is just because this unnecessarily heavy dialogue gives it away way too soon 
one thing I did enjoy, the killer is always dressed up as um, as graduation cap and gown. He's got a mask on to hide his face. But one of the fun things was the brim of the placard, the, um, the cardstock little cap that they wear is actually lined with like razor blades or something. So he uses this <laughs> razor hat as a weapon, which I thought was pretty clever and pretty fun little twist on it there. There's also another fun sort of twist at the end of the movie which is perfect, which is what we want in all of our 80s style slasher genre films. It does leave the door open for a sequel though. And we can only hope that the sequel is given a little more time and effort or the sequel is gonna be voted most likely to suck just kind of like this one did. Overall, uh, most likely to die, I'm only gonna give it a 1.5 squeals of delight out of five. It's really sad though, because it's a fun idea. It could have been more creative, more creative kills, um, better writing, uh, more fun campy style effects going on really could have been done. So what I was going for was that super camtastic, cheese fast fun style, slasher style 80s horror genre movie, but instead I just got a sad slasher substitute. So hopefully next time we'll do a little bit better. But don't believe me, go ahead and watch it for yourself if you really want to. Make sure though that you guys are subscribing. You want to hear more of these reviews. I really want to share them with you. I like getting to watch them and I love getting to talk about them. Make sure you guys are also commenting. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you didn't like. Tell me what you guys want to see next. What I want to see is a good horror movie. Kind of cleanse the palate. Something a real slasher style one's going to get me on the edge of the seat. So that's what I'm off to do. Also go ahead and check out our friends at Atomic Cotton. Thanks so much you guys for joining me today and I'll see you real soon. Bye.